Hey beloved, Krista Petterford here. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to share my vision board fails. I'm going to tell you what I did that didn't work in the last season and three things that God is teaching me in this season that are working and I'm achieving my God-given dreams. If you've ever made a vision board and put it in the trash or you put it in the garage or you stuffed it in your closet, this video is for you. The thing is, recently God has been speaking to me again about faith. It's like he's taken me back to some lessons that I've learned in the past and He's teaching me again about faith and vision and letting me see the things that I didn't get in last season, but they're helping me. They're lessons learned for this season. So he brought me back to my first vision board and showed me why it didn't work in the past. And I have a few notes here, so if you see me looking down. And as I was working through the things that he showed me in studying vision and faith, um, I watched a video by Terry Savelle Foy. And she entitled her video, Stop Just Making Vision Boards and Do This Instead, or Start Doing This Instead. She had some really good points about how to make your vision board work. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about why mine didn't work. And then I'm going to share with you what I learned on my own journey about how to make your vision board work for you. I guess I need to start um, with a little bit of my journey. It won't take me too long. I'm 49 years old and I am a mom of four young adults. <laughs> They're not so young anymore. My baby is 25 and my oldest will be 33 Christmas Eve. And I am now an empty nester. I served in my local church for 22 years, the same church. I led women's ministry. I led prayer. I have a prophetic voice, as many of you know, that watch my channel. The Lord has used me to prophesy, to teach, and to preach the word. I have done conferences and all the things. But along that time, something began missing. But let me back up a little bit. So someplace mid-level in that journey, I began to make vision boards as part of the things that God gave me to do. And in fact, vision boards, my vision board workbook was one of the um, best sellers um, on my website, one of my best selling downloads. And I made them and I did um, events around vision boards, free and paid. I mean, it was just something that I wanted because I had I had been invited because I'm also in corporate, uh, in the corporate world. So I had been invited by many people to participate in vision board event, events. And this is going back before they were really popular with Christians. And so I was invited and I said no because it seemed new agey to me. And so I had asked the Lord probably around the same time, maybe she did them before that Terry Savelle Foy had done her vision boards. I don't know because I didn't start watching hers until much later. Um, but the Lord gave me this thing and he took me to her back and I said, Lord, I want to do a vision board because it sounds good. But if it's not of you, I don't want to do it. And so he began to show me how to write, how to do a vision board his way, that there was a biblical basis for vision boards. And so I began to make them and show other women in my church and we would just come together around the holidays and we would create vision boards. That's how some of my first vision boards were made. In fact, I'll link a couple of videos below to the first vision boards. Excuse me, I was new to YouTube and I didn't care how I looked or anything like that. So we were just doing vision boards, right? And you'll get to see those. And then it grew and then I created a workbook and I was writing and speaking and all those things, but somewhere along the way, my life started to take a turn. And even though I started my Christian journey full, um, I think of Ruth, uh, the book of Ruth, where Naomi says, I went out full, but I came back empty. Time and chance, um, opportunity for things that changed the trajectory of her life happen and in her serving God and in her just doing life we all go through that things happen and long story short I 
took some hard blows and had some hard seasons in my faith and my family, but I continued to work and in my corporate job to serve. You know how we do. We keep serving everybody else and we keep going. And sometimes I like to call us the wounded warriors. That is a phrase, a term I borrowed um, from a friend of mine who is a Christian life coach. She calls them the walking wounded or the wounded warriors. And I said, oh, that's it. And so the wounded warriors and you're, you're a warrior and you're pressing on, but you have wounds, you have hurts that you haven't healed, but you keep going. And so I kept going, but things in my personal life, the things that really matter to me most like my family not like the material things those are nice but the things that really matter like my family my marriage my children things that i was believing god for that only he could do were falling apart and yet i had this vision for these things that god had given me it wasn't just my vision there were things i had mixed in there but there were things that god had also spoken to me the prophetic words and the promises of god that i had put on that board and it just came to a place where i lost hope. I tucked away the vision board. I kept doing conferences, kept serving, kept doing all those things. But I really, if I'm honest, stopped really believing truly. Or maybe it wasn't that I stopped believing, but I started having doubt and looking at things that were going on. And I just became um, almost... I won't say hopeless, but lacked hope that my dreams could really come to pass. And so I was willing to settle for, you know, serving God and the way things were and just being grateful. And we all go through hard seasons. So I'm not saying that we don't go through hard seasons, but what I'm saying is God didn't call us to live a lackluster, mediocre life to give up on the dreams that he's given us. And so I, and that's kind of what I did. I turned directions and started doing something else. And so I'm saying that because I want to um, share that story. I think it's important because this is why I, um, this is one of the reasons, um, I mean, that's what happened, but the reasons that I gave up my vision board and gave up hope on my God-given vision, after looking back, I now know why that it was deeper. In those hard seasons, things begin to happen. And that's what I want to share, the three things that looking back, I can see. But I want to say that, you know, if, if, I, if I said I had a bad life, that would be a lie. But if I said that things didn't turn out the way I hoped and dreamed they would, that would really be an understatement. So here I was in this life. I had a good life, but not the life that I had hoped and dreamed that I would, not the one that God had promised me. And um, so around 2018 with all these things, and to save time, I won't go into that, but it was the things that really mattered to my, my children, my family, my marriage, those type of things. And around 2018, after going through a very hard season, my mom passed away. And it was seemingly suddenly, but God did prepare me for it. And he spoke a word to me and told me that I was ready for her to go. A few years prior, I, it felt like there was a season that death was coming for her, but I prayed and fasted and gathered some of my intercessory friends and God turned that around for me and kept her here. But this season, 2018, March, he said, you're ready for her to go. And she went home to be with the Lord. And that's what comforted me. One is that God told me and two, that I knew that she went home to be with the Lord. He also confirmed that as well. She was a Christian, but I just had a confirmation. But when that happened, happened. I stopped and started reevaluating my life. I was in ministry. I was going fast. And one of the things that my mom had told me, had asked me to do before she left was to slow down, to slow down, to stop moving so fast and enjoy my life. And, and um, when she passed away, I started to reevaluate and to really look at what I wanted to do, what I was doing with my life and was I spending it on the things that really mattered and was I so busy doing all these things that I wasn't going after the God-given dreams that were mine and what was I going to do with the rest of my life and so it was a pivotal time in my life but 2018 it took me a little while and I slowly didn't go right back into ministry for the first time ever something happened as bad as things had been and they had gotten bad with things that my children were going 
through and things that I went through, but I kept going, kept going. But when my mom passed away, it was a hard stop. It was like a light flashing saying, you have to slow down. You can't keep on stuffing it and stuffing it and going like a warrior in war. This is not even your fight. Somebody else can do this. You need to stop and take care of yourself. And so in that season, I began to slow down. And um, long story short, let me fast and go a little bit faster. Uh, leading up to that, I mean, leading up to last year. So as I started to release things um, in 2020, early 2020, I released women's ministry, which I had led for 12 years. And in 2021, after a long season of being at my church, and actually the first church I ever went to after I was saved, other than my husband's church when I was married, um, as attended as a member. I had gone to that church for years and rarely even attended another church unless I was going to another conference because I was in ministry. And so I gave my resignation letter because I led intercessory prayer for 12 years as well. And that was after being there for 10 years. So 22 years, almost 22 years, one one month shy, two, a couple of months shy of being 22 years. So if I would have waited until beginning of February, I would have been there for 22 years. But I left in November. So this month, last year, I left my church. So this is my one year anniversary of being away from my home church where I was birthed out in ministry. I love the pastors and the leaders there and everything. Um, but I just knew that I needed to pause to do something different, to take stock of my life and being in the same place was not going to give me the space to see things differently. And so I went to another church and tried to just fall in, right? And even though I'm serving there in prayer, I had to resist the urge to take on a greater role um, because I'm the type of person who wants to always serve and that's what I do. But God, my mom had said, slow down and the Lord spoke to me and he said, this is a season where I want you to be still and to rest and let me rebuild the foundation of your life so I can send you out again into what, you, what you're supposed to be doing in this season. And so this past year has been a reflection and a season of rest. And in doing that, I realized in, in taking rest and reflection, the Lord began to speak to me about my vision board and my faith and why it wasn't working. And so, as I said, I want to talk about three things that um, caused my vision board not to work. And that is die vision, lack of faith, and incongruent conversation. And let me break those down for you because I want to help you in this video. Die vision. I um, mix God's vision. Habakkuk 2, 2 says, write the vision and make it plain. And so um, I had some vision, but he said, first he will stand his watch and see what the Lord will speak to him. And so there's something that God wants to show you. He wants to give you his God-given vision, but I was afraid of, you know, sometimes we don't believe that we can be, do, and have all God is showing us. So we settle and we mix a little of what we'll settle for with what God says. And so my vision got blurred and that causes dive vision or blurriness and you don't have clarity because you're willing to settle and you're taking all these things and the distractions of things that were coming at me and all those things. And so God's vision power with my vision was one of the reasons why my vision didn't work. My vision board didn't work because those things worked their way out on the vision instead of being very clear and specific about what God spoke to me specifically, even if it was hard to believe, um, that's what you should stick with. So that's what I want to say to you first. And then lack of faith. When you have die vision or um, you don't have clarity, you have blurriness of vision and you don't trust God or you are afraid to go all in with the thing that God showed you because it's so big, it produces a lack of faith in you. And so the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so when you are hearing everything else and focusing on everything else and looking every way and mixing, you know, maybe, you know, 
or you have a multitude of things. Let me put it that way. You have a lot of things because you're fair, scared to focus on this one thing. So, you know, what do I want on my vision board? I want to lose weight. I want to get remarried. I want a house. I want to, you know, what are the important things that God has given you to focus on? One or a few things that God has given you to focus on that you know are part of God's will for you. And then that having a lack of faith because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God produce incongruent conversation. And congruency means to be in harmony with. And so I, my words, my conversation, the words that I spoke were not in harmony with what I said I was believing God for. But the truth is my doubt outweighed my faith because I was and I don't know if it outweighed it, but you know, any amount of doubt, just like 11, am I saying that right, um, affects the whole lump. And so my doubt, I because I wasn't focused on it, division, I wasn't really digging in with my faith. And then I was speaking things that I shouldn't speak because our conversation and what we say matters. And so here's how that changed for me. I began to understand faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And what I began to see in that is faith is the spiritual reality, that's what that means, of things hoped for. And those things are the promises of God. So faith is the spiritual reality spiritual reality of the promises, prophetic words, dreams, and visions that God has given you. And the proof, the proof, evidence, proof of those things that have not yet come to pass in the physical realm yet. And so I did not understand that faith, conviction, it is my conviction of the spiritual reality of what God has spoken to me, what he has shown me and what he has promised me. And God spoke to me and said, either you're going to believe me or you don't. It's that simple. And, you know, at some point we have to decide if we're going to be all in with God. And then that is what faith in and is. And so I began to believe God. When I understood what faith is and how it works, I, I don't know if that clicks for you. I'll teach more on faith later on this channel, but faith, because that's what God has told me to talk about here coming up, but faith is the spiritual reality. Is it a reality for you? Is it real? And I went back and looked at my journals and God said, it's already done. He said it as well. So I'm getting ahead of myself. And then going back to the vision that God gave me. So I went back to my vision that God gave me. I went back to my journals and the things that God had spoken to me and I had to reclaim those and that's what I and that reignited my faith reclaiming those visions and believing God it's not enough just to look at them and reclaim them like there's something I could do the things that I was believing God for many of those things they were I was helpless I was helpless to do them because they were spiritual things that God could do now there are certain things that I can do and there is a work that we have to do to um discipline ourselves and those type of things but some of those things the work is to stay in faith and so I went back and looked at my vision and claimed them and that ignited my faith that said whether I have to work for it or believe for whatever I have to do I am standing for God to do this I'm standing for myself to do this I believe that I'm capable and able and anointed by God to be do and have the things that he's promised me and so that began and that's Habakkuk 2 2 and then speaking God's word I changed my conversation I began to say what God God says about me it is well it is well means peace 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 it is well everything is good it's all good in the hood and it's already done it's already a spiritual reality and my conviction my belief in the spiritual reality of what God has done God has done it it is finished is my proof that I'm holding on to that just because it's not here in the physical realm doesn't mean that it's not already done as I wait and the Bible says that Abraham gave glory to God 
considering that he who had promised him was faithful to deliver on what he said, to make it happen, to produce in the natural what he had done in the spirit. And so I had to get hold of that. This is how we obtain the promises of God. And that's the next verse I want to read to you. Hebrews 6, 12, faith and patience. With faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. And so I had to learn how to endure and be patient because I didn't understand the stages that our faith go through and how we get tried and how the devil tries to sift us. Sure, I could teach on it, but having gone through seasons of sifting where the enemy is trying to get me to give up the word of God and settle for something less I understand how important it is to hold on to your faith. And so I hope that this video has encouraged you. And another thing that I did, by the way, is I also learned how to let go of the things that's prioritizing the things that really matter. I think I talked about that a little bit, but in this season, you know, I had to make my faith in the promise of God. And that's what I'm doing. It, the pearl of great price. I had to make it the most valuable thing, willing to let go of everything else to hold on to God's faith and uh, to God's word with my faith and see it come to pass. That's how much it matters to me. That's how much the promises of God and what he's spoken over my life matters to me. So woman of God, daughter of God, whatever you're going through, whatever season of life you're in, I want you to reignite your faith. I pray that this video has reignited your faith in God. I pray that you go get your vision board out, dust it off, wipe it off, put it back up. If you got to do it over, do it over. Maybe there's some things that are distracting you and creating division, got a million things up and you're not focusing on the one or the few things that God has called you to do. Well, I want you to do that. And so if you need help in creating your vision board, I um, have, as I said at the beginning, a vision board um, workbook that is not expensive at all. It's downloadable, and I'll leave that in the link if you want to purchase that. Um, and maybe in the new year, I'm thinking about doing a vision board challenge. And so I know I was supposed to do one a couple of years ago, and I just didn't. Things came up, but I'm in a different season. I believe that was the season where I was leaving my church and, you know, just so many things were happening. So, um, and I just gave people their money back. It was just a season where it was the end of a transition, the end of an old season and the beginning of a new season. And I had been in transition, so to speak, since 2018, not knowing what was going to happen and what my next season was going to be. And then here I was. And so if you want to purchase my Christian Vision Board workbook, I have revamped it knowing the lessons that God has given me and um, re really focusing on faith. And you can download that with the link in my bio or the link, I said link in my bio, like I'm on um, Instagram using the link in the description. And then if you need help prioritizing the things that really matter to you in this season, you can download my free 28-day lifestyle reset workbook. It's a 28-day free lifestyle reset workbook. And I used to do it as a challenge. And I may bring that back again because here God is bringing me back to the path of faith and bringing me into this season after a season of pause and ponder <laughs> to the things that he began with, which is faith, vision, faith, and prioritizing the things that really matter. Yeah, we know those things, but to teach them and to remind them, remind other women of them is what he's given me to do in this season. So I hope this, I hope this video blessed you and um, please like, this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos about reigniting your faith um, achieving your dreams and focusing on the things that matter in this season
that really matter to you. And then share this with someone that you know needs it. God bless you. Until next time.